Question 12 of Section 2 of the 2018 Higher Physics Examination. A student carries out a series of experiments to investigate alternating current. A signal generator is connected to an oscilloscope and a circuit as shown. We can see the oscilloscope connected to a signal generator and a circuit here which has an LED, a red LED, a green LED and two resistors and a, an ammeter. Now it says 12A part I determine the peak voltage of the output of the signal generator. Well we can see from the output of the signal generator on the oscilloscope screen and there we have the middle line here and we can see that the peak voltage is precisely three squares tall and we're told that one division in the Y gain is one volt. Remember it's the Y gain will give you this value up here. So all we have to do then is say that uh, the peak voltage V peak is equal to the number of boxes. We have got three boxes or three divisions and each division is 1.0 volts. So for the peak voltage is going to be equal to three volts. Part two. Determine the frequency of the output of the signal generator. Well, to do that, we know that the frequency of the supply can be found by saying 1 divided by the period. And the period T of that signal is the time it takes for one complete cycle. That's from here all the way to there. That's one complete cycle. Now that takes one, two, three, four, four boxes or four divisions. So we put in four divisions and multiply it by what one division is. And one division is 0 0.5 seconds. So it's 0 0.5 seconds per division. So we can see then that the period T of that signal is four times 0 0.5 is two seconds. But we want to find the frequency. So the frequency is equal to 1 divided by the period which equals 1 divided by 2 and therefore the frequency has got to be equal to 0 0.5 and it's a hertz units of frequency. Question 12 part A and number 3. The student observes from the circuit that the red LED is only lit when the ammeter gives a positive reading and a green LED is only lit when the ammeter gives a negative reading. Now in order to explain that I'm going to take a look at the signal generator's output on the oscilloscope and that's it there. And I've coloured the top part of the graph red and the bottom part of the graph green. There's a clue there. You see, when we have this part of the graph here, we have a positive voltage. So the polarity is going one way. In this particular case, we'll draw it red here. The polarity will be here. It'll be minus and it'll be plus. So all this red part here will give a polarity of minus and plus. This part here will give you the opposite polarity to that. But let's see what happens when we're in the red part of the graph. In this part, the electric current is going to go in this direction here and it's going to meet the LED, but the LED is correctly biased for it. Remember, that part of the LED is minus and that part is plus, And you can see it will let the current flow through here and light up the, L the red LED, giving you a positive reading on the ammeter. Now the current that comes down this part of the circuit, it will be blocked by this LED because we have got it reverse biased. The negative part should be down this part here. So that LED will be blocked and therefore on that cycle only the red LED will light up because only the red LED is correctly biased. Now let's take a look at what happens when we go to the green part of the circuit. On the green part of the circuit, the polarity has changed. We have minus here and we have plus here. Now the current is going to flow in this direction now, but it's going to be blocked because, once again, the red LED this time is reverse biased. But the current coming down here, it can pass through there, it meets the negative part of the LED, it is correctly forward biased, therefore the green LED will light up and the red LED will not. 
So in this particular graph here, we can see the varying signal. Anything above the middle line is going to give you a polarity which will light up the red LED and anything below here will give a polarity or light up the green LED but not the red LED. Question 12, part B. The signal generator is now connected and a circuit is shown. The settings on the signal generator are unchanged. The signal generator has negligible internal resistance. And what we've got to do is determine the RMS voltage across the 82 ohm resistor. Well, we know we have the peak voltage. We worked it out previously. Peak voltage is 3 volts. Now, we can work out the RMS voltage, the root mean squared voltage, from that. Because we know that VRMS is going to be equal to V peak divided by the square root of 2. So that's going to give us 3 volts divided by the square root of 2 and therefore we say that the VRMS is going to be 2.12 volts and we'll put RMS down here to keep remembering that that's the average voltage through this AC circuit 2.12 volts. Now we have to determine the RMS voltage across the 82 ohm resistor. Now all we've got here is a, a voltage divider circuit. And to find the voltage divider circuit, we just rely on the fact that the voltage output is going to be equal to, and we take the resistance we're looking at, 82 ohms, and we divide that by the total resistance, 68 plus 82, that's the, the rule of thumb, and then multiply it by the VRMS, which worked out 2.12 volts we'll call that vrms so when we do that calculation 82 divided by 68 plus 82 times 2.12 we end up with an answer of 1.16 volts and remember it's rms value we're dealing with here and we can actually put it down to 1.2 volts to two significant figures